Good morning guys and welcome to another day in paradise. I tell you what, that weatherman absolutely nailed the forecast. Lovely blue skies, clear day, not much wind either, couldn't be much better. I've just walked up to a little hill next to camp and you just get the most amazing views up here. Check that out. And there is no one else around for, for miles. Fantastic. Anyway, what's the plan for today? Well, I'm thinking I might pack up camp pretty early and go for a drive around to see if there's somewhere I can drop the kayak in the water. Because down here, although it looks like we're right on the water there, there's a bit of a cliff drop off. So not really ideal kayak launching areas. So, you know, maybe four, four star review on, on TripAdvisor for that. Um, anyway, firstly, let's get some breakfast on the go. If you guys are looking for a nice cheap camping accessory, check out insulated drink bottles. I use these for storing ice when I go away camping and it literally keeps ice frozen for like three or four days straight in the middle of summer. Perfect for my iced coffee on a morning like today. Check that out, iced coffee with ice. Oh yes, so I've made some delicious scrambled eggs for breakfast and I tell you what, that's not a bad view to eat breakfast too. If anyone's wondering how long it takes to fully pack up camp like that, like you just watched in the time lapse, I ran a timer and 15 minutes, 15 minutes from how it was set up before with the awning out, the tent up, the cooker was out, the pantry, all of that, 15 minutes to get it completely packed away. That's including the kayak on the roof as well and all ready to head off. Speaking of, this day is still beautiful and I reckon I might go for a drive around, see if I can find somewhere to drop the kayak in. Let's get on the road again. I tell you what, you'd have to be pretty crazy to try and camp up that side of the beach, wouldn't you? In other news, the wind's up a lot. <laughs> Probably see Bob my hood flapping around. So there's not too many places I'm going to be able to put the kayak in. But I have found a bit of a sheltered bay. Seems to be um, a bit cut off from the wind by the island, which is nice. I won't be able to go for, for too big of a kayak, but I should be able to stay within this bay relatively safely. Anyway, let's get it in the water. Well, that didn't exactly go to plan. Literally the second I took the straps off the kayak, the wind just about doubled and took the whole kayak off the roof. So I kind of figured if the wind's that strong, it's probably not safe for me to be out there on the water by myself. So even to get the kayak back on the roof, I had to drag it up completely off the beach, drive the car up just so it was um, like, just so the wind was low enough that I could actually load it and strap it down without the wind just taking it straight off again. 
Actually, that's probably a good time to talk about safety too. If you're wanting to come out and start doing trips similar to this, just make sure you do it safely. I know it probably looked like I just jumped in the car, headed down and found a spot, but I make sure I told people exactly where I was going. I even like sent a pin location of where I was planning to camp, how long I was planning on staying for and all that information. Just in case when I got here, I might not have had reception and something could have gone wrong. Also, make sure you take well and truly enough food to last you three times as long as you actually plan on staying for. I bought 35 litres of water for this one night trip. I only used about maybe 10 for, you know, washing dishes, drinking and all that. So I've still got 25 left over. It's just, it's always better to have more than not enough. Also food, like I bought food for the trip to eat, but also always have plenty of long lasting food like pasta, rice, canned food, stuff like that that doesn't go bad. I just leave all that stuff in the canopy pretty much at all times. So if worse came to worse, I got here, I got stuck, my phone didn't have reception, at least I've got enough food and water to last me a couple of weeks. And hopefully, because I've told people that I'm only gone for the one night and told them exactly where I am, you'd hope that they'd send out a search party before those two weeks ran out. Anyway guys, that brings us to the end of this Sandy Cape mini-series. I'm just going to air up the tyres and then head on home to Perth. You can already see the storm clouds are rolling in, so it's probably going to be a pretty wild night here in Durian Bay, I think. Thanks so much for coming along on the journey. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.